This week we're going to be discussing the Screen Room and the industry's red herring on piracy. For those of you unaware, the Screen Room buy a setup box for $150 and that then allows you to stream movies into your living room that are actually in cinemas. Um, this completely contravenes the way that the industry works and it's creating a huge hoo-ha over in Hollywood and we wanted to address some of the things that uh, we think are, are relevant to the arguments for and against this. One of the things that's going to be banded around a lot as a an argument against this uh, this technology is the fact that the screen room will promote piracy. People fear that by having a high uh, definition setup at home, people will be able to set up a ring in their room and record their films directly onto camera as they're watching them. Um, so addressing this issue of piracy, what we feel is really behind uh, the reason why people illegally stream is that it's a problem to do with access. If you look online hard enough, you can pretty much find any film available for download. And I, in this video, I wanted to address the whole concept of piracy, and kind of get down to the bottom of why people uh, illegally stream movies, and what should really actually be done about it. So in summer of 2013, I took part in a really interesting study launched by the EAC, you can find it online. The main finding that we had at that time was out of everyone that had been interviewed in the study, 55% of them had streamed content illegally. And obviously these rates were dependent on which country that you were in. The worst countries were countries like Romania and Poland, which were in the 70% in the of people that were interviewed. And at the other end of the spectrum was sort of Britain and, uh, and Germany, where we were looking at still around 30%. What was found during that study, there were, there were like five major reasons why people torrented content. The first one was cost. Many of the users admitted that uh, the cost of going to the cinema was too high, and therefore buying a movie online or going to see it at film at, at the film theaters wasn't worth the money. Uh, the second major factor was risk. Over 37% of the people interviewed said that the films that they were potentially interested to go and see weren't interesting enough for them to risk spending that money. And I think that's a very important thing. A lot of films are not made, uh, not every film is made for the cinema. Uh, yet uh, uh, putting it in a cinema is a standard tried and tested route to the launching of a film, and we don't believe that's the case for all movies. 31% complained that it was the ease of access, many of these films being available online on, on pirate sites which are easy to use, particularly with services like Popcorn Time that streamline the whole way that even your mum could basically jump up online and, and start watching a film illegally. Lack of availability, it was another uh, major factor. Again, 30% of people interviewed complained that the movies weren't available in their country and they had no other way of seeing them other than to go onto a pirate site. And then the final one, which is this idea of latent demand, 27% of the people who were interviewed basically said that by the time they got round to uh, trying to go and see the film, it had already left the exhibition window. And this concept of windows is kind of key to this whole argument. A window is a period of time that uh, a, a piece of content will sit either in a cinema or um, home entertainment. If you've ever noticed as a user, there's usually about six to nine weeks, sometimes 10 weeks, before a film moves from um, being available within the cinema to being available on DVD. And in that period, the people who are working on the, uh, on the film, the Foxes and Sony's and Warners of this world, they don't really do much of anything to market the movie in that dead zone. The, the problem with windowing is that these are fixed time periods. And as people are very, very busy, there may be a great job done by the studio to market to that individual uh, and get an interest in the film. But the problem is that by the time they've actually organized their life and thought, Christ, I've got to go out and go and see this, uh, it's already left cinemas. And therefore, they've got to wait another 10 weeks before it'll come uh, available on iTunes or DVD. And, you know, the temptation's there. So um, we feel that this whole argument against the screen room is a total uh, red herring. It's, it's basically a, a smokescreen put up there uh, by the industry lobby groups to uh, protest against the, um, the uh, idea of the screen room. Uh, if we look at current examples that are happening within uh, the news on piracy, we saw some scandals related to people uh, getting their, whole, their hands on copies that were meant for circulation prior to the Oscars for exclusive screenings of the movies, and these were mailed out to the various pirate sites, uh, or the pirates got their hands on them, uh, because someone within that network mailed it out to them, and lo and behold, you know, some cracking movies were up on uh, uh, and are freely available on many of the torrent sites that are out there. 
Uh, piracy is the least of the concerns that the studios and the exhibitors should be having about this device. I think they really should be looking at this as the new way to broadcast content because overall, I think in three or four years time, once the dust is all settled and there are numerous services like this, because that's the way we believe it will be going, you will see that uh, actually piracy drops off when content becomes available. And there are numerous studies, again, that we can point to within the blog post that we wrote about this, and we'll put in as links alongside this, uh, this video, that if you increase access, piracy declines, which means that people who make content stand a better chance of getting paid for it.